Hi everybody, welcome back, Democracy 3! Man, the Conservatives hate us. The glorious nation of Canada being ruled by myself, uh, and of course with the help of the uh, coalition of dinguses. Uh, we've got 37 political capital going in uh, to this uh, turn. We are slowly making our way through uh, the first term. We're doing okay so far. we still got this rail strike. We talked about it last episode. Uh, we want to try to get rid of the rail strike and help things along. Uh, the Conservatives, we need to do a little bit of work on getting them up into possibly the yellow, balancing everything out. It, it would be nice to please everybody. I don't know if we're going to actually finish the first term having pleased everybody. It might not happen, uh, but we can try. We'll try our best, right? As true Canadians, we will try to be friends with everybody and not offend a single soul out there in the rest of the country. I think I think we can do it. So, Conservatives, let's take a quick look. It looks like uh, prostitution being legalized is having some sort of impact. Uh, the fact that there's vigilante mobs on the loose uh, in the country also having a bit of a negative impact on the Conservatives. Uh, the uh, legalization of certain narcotics, of course, uh, always uh, tends to... Um, or the threat of legalizing narcotics always tends to get the conservatives' backs up, uh, which is fine. It's understandable. Not everybody likes drugs. Uh, the conservatives being a, uh, a party that are firmly opposed to drugs. Uh, so there you go. It looks like we've got a Race Discrimination Act in place that's also uh, contributing negatively to the Conservatives. The abortion law, which we touched on uh, a couple episodes ago. And, of course, inheritance tax as well, which is something that we can mess around with and uh, plunge ourselves into further debt. Uh, our deficit is $24.76 billion, and uh, our overall debt is huge still. Uh, it's absolutely huge and will keep piling up thanks to the deficit. Uh, we're currently making $60.68 billion uh, every term, uh, but we're spending way more than that as well, contributing to the uh, deficit. So there we go. Uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, let's see. How is this rail strike doing? It looks like we're heading down towards the stop trigger uh, very, very slightly. Uh, it looks like these rail subsidies uh, that we put in place uh, haven't like fully uh, come to fruition yet. Uh, and it looks like labor laws, maybe we could do uh, something around that as well. Poor earnings and unemployment are a bit tougher to manipulate, I think. Labor laws is probably our best bet to get rid of this rail strike. Uh, so let's take a look. Got to find labor laws first. Where the hell are they? There they are. Look, they're hidden over here at the back of the economy. Labor laws. Um, this one was the one that contributes to the working week. Uh, that's right. So we want to maybe reduce this slightly more. Or do we? Do we want to remain... Do we want to go pro-employer? It'll help. It'll help us get rid of the rail strike even more. And that might be just enough, actually. That might just be the little boost that we need to get rid of the rail strike. Of course, the working week uh, will grow as well and everybody will be very mad uh, because they will not get a day off. John Gilmore here, uh, a distant cousin of um, Doug Gilmore, the famous hockey player, of course, uh, is my uh, minister for uh, the economy. And uh, he doesn't seem to be phased either way, whether or not we decide to move or not move this slider and affect the working week. So, John, uh, if there's any uh, problems with doing this, I'm afraid it's your fault. It's going to cost us 20 uh, man fists to uh, implement this. We're doing it. I think people will be very pissed at this, but it'll help us get rid of this rail strike. Now, we also want to try to tackle crime as well. We want to get rid of organized crime if possible. We also want to get rid of whatever this alcohol abuse. Look, I was... I was too hasty there. I clicked on alcohol abuse. I didn't mean to. I just wanted to hover over it. Alcohol abuse is um, being propped up by uh, currently unemployment, poverty, and alcohol consumption. Uh, but it's being tackled by community policing, which we put in recently. Also the police force uh, and is contributing negatively to health and positively influencing crime. So alcohol abuse is another thing that hopefully during this term we can eradicate. We can make Canada an alcohol abuse free country. Can you imagine? Just take a minute. Just take a minute and sit down and close your eyes and just imagine for one second that Canada becomes alcohol abuse free. It might happen in this term. We might be able to do it. Uh, so let's see. Police force. 
How you doing? We can lower this. We won't. We don't want to lower this though. Uh, we want to raise this. We want to raise the amount of money that we're pouring into the police force. Every government needs to employ a police force to ensure order is kept and laws are obeyed. Uh, but it's a matter of debate exactly how much uh, should be spent on the police. Now, uh, some favor a large force with police on every street corner. Uh, others prefer a more low-key and tolerant approach. So. Uh, you'll probably find that the conservatives will uh, break out into some sort of state of ecstasy uh, the more we increase uh, spending on police. Uh, and we'll probably find that... Are the, are the liberals in here somewhere? No, they're not. State employees. It looks like we can probably get away with this. Uh, the conservatives will be very happy. See, if we pump this all the way up to the maximum, look at that. They get this like big green pseudo boner the uh, conservatives. They really like that. Now, the uh, the spending, of course, is like through the roof. We've gone from 1.58 billion all the way to uh, 2.8 billion, which, of course, is a lot of money. It doesn't look like a lot of money because it's like a, a small number. I mean, if you ignore the B and the N here, it looks like all you're spending is like two bucks and 80 cents on the police force, which in some countries is is probably like the the average weekly r wage of a police officer uh but not in this country no these guys are going to get paid really well uh we're going to give them like tasers and mace and like all sorts of shit so that they can deal with stuff and look at the effects of pumping this up all the way to maximum uh it's going to cost us four man fists to raise this uh we didn't want to lower it, it would have cost us a shit ton to lower it the conservatives uh, become very happy with this. State employees also quite happy. Uh, state employee membership goes up. And look at this. Uh, violent crime. Uh, state employees income. <laughs> uh, actually, that comes up a little bit. It's not too bad. That's not a bad thing. Uh, unemployment, alcohol abuse, vigilante mobs, and, uh, and overall crime all take a huge hit from having a maximum uh, invested police force. From the government. Uh, so I think we're going to do it. We're going to actually do it. We're going to spend four man points on this. Bam. There we go. Uh, William Khan, if you could be so kind as to implement that, please. Your effectiveness is only 56%. Please don't screw it up. Don't like slip on a banana peel and then, you know, violent crime just like gets out of hand or whatever. Um, because you seem fairly incompetent. Didn't want to say. And I might fire you. But we'll see. We'll see how we do after this turn. Okay, 13 man points left. I can carry some over. There's always the chance to carry over. Um, we've made a couple of changes with the, with the policing and the labor laws, so it'll be interesting to see those effects uh, in the next one. Uh, alcohol abuse, we haven't really done anything with yet, and I've clicked it again. Man, I've got this thing for clicking on alcohol abuse for some reason. Uh, poverty, alcohol consumption, and unemployment. So, uh, alcohol consumption will be uh, influenced all over the place. Look at this. It's having... Uh, whoops, it's having... <laughs> the fact that people are are consuming legal drugs is having some sort of ramification on alcohol consumption. I guess it's an either-or, and not something that's done both at the same time. Very debatable, uh, but we'll just, we'll just go along with it for now. Of course, alcohol consumption also impacts productivity, uh, a, an economic factor that we don't really want to be impacted. Uh, the alcohol tax... Uh, is currently bringing alcohol consumption uh, down somewhat. Uh, the GDP is also uh, going towards uh, helping uh, alcohol consumption. As the GDP grows, uh, people have more money to spend on alcohol, I guess, so they will want to go out and buy copious amounts of alcohol and get shit-faced all the time, which is fine. I mean, if that's what people want to do, so be it. Alcohol consu consumption, of course, also negatively affects health. Uh, and it looks like unemployment, uh, sorry, alcohol consumption is also boosting up crime. The alcohol law is feeding into the alcohol consumption. So I think there's two things that we can definitely check there. Alcohol consumption, we would like to reduce violent crime and alcohol abuse with off the back of. Uh, alcohol law and alcohol tax are two things that we can look at to help maybe uh, bring down uh, alcohol consumption. Let's take a quick look at alcohol law. There's ample evidence that excessive consumption of alcohol can lead to health problems and even premature death. Wow. 
A very bold statement. <laughs> However, some people object to the state interfering in an individual's right to choose what he or she drinks. There is also the complication that the government can make a lot of money by taxing alcohol. It's true, we can actually make a little bit of money uh, back. Now, our alcohol law currently is a minimum age of 18. Now, I haven't lived in Canada for 10 years, in the real Canada, and if nothing's changed, that's true in Quebec, in the province of Quebec, the minimum age is indeed 18. Everywhere else, as far as I know, the legal age is 19. Now, I don't think we have the option of raising it to 19, which is a little bit unrealistic. I wish maybe they would have taken into account the fact that there is an age limit of 19 in Ontario eh, anyway. I'm not sure about the rest of Canada. I'm pretty sure it's 19 across the board except for Quebec. Uh, but as far as I know, the legal age in America, and that's all over America, is 21. That is the legal age where you can actually go into a beer or liquor store, give your ID, and be like, hook me up, I'm ready to party. And the guy has no choice but to hook you up, and that's fine. Now, see the slider? Look at the effect straight away just by making the minimum age 21. That's going to cost us 13 man points to raise. That's going to use up all of our man points if we want to do this. It's probably a good one to use. It's going to take uh, one... Uh, iteration of delay to implement which is not too bad uh, the liberals do not like the fact that the minimum age is 21 however alcohol consumption does take a hit which is what we're after violent crime takes a little bit of a hit and the youth of the country of course become very mad because uh, they were able to buy alcohol at the age of 18 and anyone caught in that vacuum now the 18 to 21s um, which are considered youth are going to be pretty mad until they hit 21 and then they'll probably be pretty happy so fine it's it's a little bit of a sacrifice but uh for the overall good and uh and for for the benefits that we can get from people not drinking so much alcohol i think it's probably worth it so we're going to spend all of our man fists on this we're going to apply this yes william Kahn. uh again I'm not sure how effective you are. It looks like it could swing either way. I really hope that you can get this one implemented for me ASAP. That would be nice. Okay. Perfect. There we go. We'll monitor those very closely. There's nothing else we can do. So let's do it. Next term. Uh, we've misinterpreted the Constitution once again, uh, unfortunately. It's going to happen, though. It's a very complicated Constitution. Uh, there we go. Quarterly report. GDP, health, education, everything is uh, sort of, well, health, I, I was going to say everything is going sort of well. Health's not very good. Poverty hasn't really moved much. Crime is coming down, though. Look at that. We've made, we've taken a huge chunk out of crime. Uh, and in actual fact, we're almost like crime fighters. If we were wearing like a mask and a cape, maybe like a, a flamboyant pair of underpants, we could be considered the ultimate superheroes. But the reality is... We're a bunch of crusty old men with white hair, women too, wearing uh, business suits, and of course women are wearing... Women don't wear business suits, do they? They wear like power suits, they, they call them power suits, which, you know, sounds like, uh, like something like a bionic commando might wear, but no, it's actually just a, a woman working in parliament, in our case, wearing a power suit. So there you go. Uh, unemployment is uh, pretty much unaffected as well this turn. Uh, debt protection law. There's an urgent policy question that requires my immediate attention, apparently. Let's see about this debt protection law. Uh, debt collection agencies, uh, if, you're, if you're aware of these or unaware of these, have been in the news because of the aggressive methods they are using to extract payment from people who owe large sums of money. Wow. I don't know if you've seen the shows where those people go around in the vans and they always have shaved heads to make them look even more menacing. They sort of like knock on your door three or four times if you don't answer the door they kick down your door and they just start taking your stuff and loading it in the van because it's theirs because you borrowed money and you couldn't pay it back so actually it's still their shit and they can just put it in the van and take it away and then you get home and all there is is just an empty house with like a telephone on the floor and a note that said sorry we took all your shit and that's it that's all you got left and uh, even then most of the time you still owe them money because of all the interest that's like accrued on that uh, on, on that repayment and stuff. Uh, these debt collection agencies provide a credit to people uh, whom larger, more respectable companies will not lend money. A law is proposed to limit the ways in which such agencies can operate. 
uh, I think it's probably going to be a good thing to limit agency activity. Because the thing is, uh, if people can borrow money, the likelihood is that they will. Uh, and if we limit this activity, it means that perhaps we're not going to be able to lend people more money, but then at least we're sort of saying to people that you should be living within your means. And if you're not earning like any money whatsoever, well, it's fine because we're going to enact a whole bunch of welfare policies to help you out anyway. And you can get some stuff, and you can get some food and stuff. And it might be, it might not be as much as like you would have been able to if you just borrowed like a hundred grand off like one of these crazy agencies that's not uh, limited at the moment. But It'll still be fine, trust me. Look, I've got my sincere face on. I'm the Prime Minister, and I'm saying, just trust me. Limit agents activity. Yeah. We did it. There, it's done. The economic forecast is looking good. Budget report. Uh, we're running a huge deficit, as we mentioned. 26.85 billion. Uh, security briefing. It looks like the Human Rights Society has been criticizing me, uh, which is not the best. Uh, people are indifferent to us at the polls, but... Uh, we're climbing. Look at that. 61% of the vote in an election. That's a win. That That is a win. Look, it's looking good. The future is bright for the uh, coalition of dinguses. Uh, cabinet report. It looks like the loyalty of our ministers is uh, loyal, which is good. And their effectiveness is adequate. Great. Perfecto. Look at that. 25 big points. Uh, it looks like the rail strike is almost done. Look at that. We've affected it. It's past the stop trigger. That means that it's probably going to be gone next turn, which is very good. We we'll finally get rid of the rail strike. Uh, how did we do on uh, the old alcohol abuse? Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's coming down big time. We've really made a huge dent in it. Look at that. We got four turns left before community policing really makes like a massive dent in this, uh, which is good. And that might be enough to bring down alcohol abuse altogether. Uh, alcohol consumption was uh, one of the key... Uh, well, sorry, the only <laughs> contributing factor to alcohol abuse. Uh, and there's other ways that we can limit alcohol consumption as well. We changed the uh, minimum drinking age, which was great. Uh, we've also got this alcohol tax, which is chewing into the alcohol consumption overall. Uh, let's take a look at this. Medically, there is a clear case for the government to tax alcohol in order to discourage consumption because of its negative effects on health and its possible links to social breakdown. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if you have uh, friends or family who drink in excess, uh, but generally, uh, they are somewhat antisocial. That's a bit of a sweeping statement for me, but uh, you can't really get, you can't leverage the best out of a person when they are off their face <laughs> drunk, because they're no longer able to operate heavy machinery. I don't even think they're allowed. I think you can actually get pulled over for drunkenly handling heavy machinery. So if you work like in a factory or something like that, forget it. That's not the job for you if this is the type of life that you've decided to live. Um, so there's huge ramifications on people uh, over consuming uh, alcohol. Uh, so if we tax it a little bit more, we'll discourage uh, people even more. And then we won't have an alcohol-fueled culture in Canada. I mean, this is a fake Canada. I don't think the real Canada has like a massive alcohol problem, or at least it didn't when I lived there that I knew of anyway. Who knows now though, it's been like 10 years. God, a lot can change. All right, uh, so currently the tax is 30%, which is like enormous, <laughs> that's an enormous uh, alcohol tax, but it's making us 1.16 billion per quarter. Now, we slide this up, it's gonna cost us nine man points to do this. Uh, the poor, uh, are affected quite negatively. Uh, equality takes a little bit of a dip, but alcohol consumption, crucially, um, takes a little bit of a dip as well. So let's say we raise that up to 40%, still a lot. Uh, and uh, Tristan Gretzky, uh, famous long lost brother of, uh, of course, Wayne Gretzky, who is 51% effective at his job, is like, yeah, 10%, who fucking cares? Just, just, <laughs> just do it. Just do it, PM. That's like his like abbreviation for Prime Minister. Fine. Okay, Tristan, I'm going to do it. Uh, we're going to apply that. 40%. Great. Uh, popularity of voters, 0%. Shouldn't have much of an impact. Uh, and it's going to take us one turn to uh, implement, apparently. Let's do it. Good job, Tristan. Great. So, we are now taxing alcohol 10% further. Fucking 
crazy. We have 16 man points left. Let's save those. We'll save those for the next episode. Let's end there. We've probably done actually a lot. A lot more than we have in previous episodes. But we're getting there. We're getting through this term slowly but surely. And the, the goal is to be re-elected. That's what we want to be at the end of this term. Uh, so we're going to continue to strive towards that goal. We'll make some changes uh, next time. We'll get finally get rid of this rail strike, I'm fairly confident, and uh, hopefully alcohol abuse as well. Uh, and then things should just start working in our favor. It'll have a domino effect. Getting rid of some of these negative issues uh, will then just have some sort of knock-on effect to the rest of them. And hopefully we can start teching up our country, uh, glorious Canada, a, tech, a bastion of technology, uh, and, uh, and we can start uh, maybe uh, making a bit of money. I doubt that's going to happen, but we might get re-elected. The goal is to get re-elected anyway. Uh, so, as usual, thanks very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time!